Welcome to the Arctos Assembly Manual version 0.2. We will cover all the steps necessary to build this robot. Robotic arm has a 6 degrees of freedom, powered by stepper motors and a closed loop control. It can manipulate objects up to 500 grams within 600 millimeters of space. Without further ado, let's get started. We will start with X upper core by inserting the 12 bearings and securing them with bolts. Now comes the top bearing, and it must be flush with the top plane. In the X pulley we insert the nuts followed by the shaft that is secured by three nuts and bolts. Then we can assemble the pulley, insert a bearing from below and secure everything with the X pulley nut. This is the best time to give the pulley a few spins to see how it goes. Now we mount the X lower core. Congratulations, we have the base ready. Here we have X motor core that features neodymium magnets. It is fixed by four nuts and bolts. Insert the idlers before mounting the stepper motor. Here we have GT2 pulley mounted on a stepper motor. Below is a servo driver. They are together bolted in the core. It's easier to do it upside down and secure the motor with the nuts. Put the belt, tighten it and give it a spin. Now we insert the bearings into the cycloidal discs. With first camshaft piece and a three dowel pins we can also check how it spins. Other two discs are assembled in the same way. Also check for the assembly order and orientation. All parts are labeled. After closing the cover we can insert rest of the dowel pins, put the bearings on and secure everything by bolts and nuts. Here we have Z lower cores that should be oriented to match the rectangular cable opening, and they are also bolted together. Insert the NEMA 23 stepper motor before bolting the Y cores. While inserting the GT2 pulley, don't over tighten the set screw because later it will need to align with the belt. Bolt the core parts together and insert the magnets. Now we will test if those nuts we put earlier are still there. Rest of the bolts and magnets are also assembled. Here we have not showed double end threaded rods that goes through the entire gearbox and is secured by five nuts on both sides. Insert the pulley and assemble the belt tightener. Now it's right time to adjust the motor pulley to align the belt. This cable carrier also needs a magnet so we can read the joint values as the robot moves. This cycloidal gearbox is assembled the same way as previous. They are basically the same, just this one is a bit smaller. That means I had to design it with different hardware, and that also means completely new equations, sketches and stuff just so we can have the desired look. Also the rules are the same, follow the parts labeling and order of the assembly. Here 
we mount the nuts into the A core, before we mount the NEMA 17 stepper motor. Two cycloidals are connected by these big parts that will definitely test your 3D printer's bed leveling. Also they are the biggest parts, and they need at least 200 by 200 millimeters bed size. This NEMA 17 could be easily upgraded to NEMA 23 to get some additional torque. But, we just had this one from the previous version. This part has to be slid into and then secured by the bolts. Some of these steps will go differently in the reality, because well yeah, the gravity and stuff. Also the same procedure on the other side, just this time I didn't forget to illustrate the knots. Insert the remaining bolts and magnets. Are these parts looking familiar? Because we steal the design from the previous cable carrier, but changed a few things so nobody's gonna notice. Also this procedure of inserting the pulley bearings, nuts, the pulley, the belt tensioner and the belt are the same as before. Wherever is possible use the washers in between bolts and the plastic parts. As you go don't forget to check how things move, and if any adjustments are needed. After inserting the pulleys joints can be moved by hand. Go and play with them, check what moves where. Don't stop the curiosity. Here we have assembly of a split ring compound planetary gearbox. That is done by herringbone gears cut in half and connected by the bolts. This way we have strong gearbox with the fewer parts. Inside the input sun gear we have to insert the metal collar and tighten the set screw through a dedicated hole made in the A-core. Also double check that your planet gear's orientation is the same as illustrated, otherwise they won't rotate. Output sun features the encoder magnet as well. Do the rest of the covers and connectors of the A-axis. Try to press the parts against the bearing while tightening the bolts to ensure we have no play. Insert the encoder. We will skip this side for now. But first, let's assemble the bevel gears. We are basically making a differential drive here. Just like in cars, but for different purpose. Here we have another compound planetary gearbox. Just this time it's more compact and the output sun gear is also a pulley that drives the bevel gears by a timing belt. It's time to mount 6th axis gear. As a golden rule, firmly secure the components against the bearings to vanquish the notorious foe, Mr. Backlash. In the realm of robotics, Backlash is the villain everyone loves to hate.
here is the cable path if you want to have your robot looking clean. Otherwise, you can have them outside. It's easier to troubleshoot and do maintenance in the future. But cables outside will make designer lay down and cry. In the next few steps we will mount the limit switches and their corresponding holders. After that the remaining encoders are mounted. Best thing is that limit switches are connected straight to the encoders, so no extra wiring is needed. Stepper motor fan is mounted on the Z middle panels. Middle panels are always secured by the bolts instead magnets. Because they have a structural as well as aesthetic purpose. Now on the electronics panel that holds 12 volt DC female connector, power switch and a LED indicator lamp. This modular component can be detached, allowing us the flexibility to easily incorporate new additions in the future. I don't have any more AI voice credits, so you will have to figure the rest out for yourself. Okay, I got a bit more. If you ever find yourself in need of assistance, hop on a Discord server there, you'll find some serious nerds who can help you out or engage in discussions about our future upgrades. Go check out our website arctosrobotics.com to find more details. I'd love to hear from all of you. Drop a comment and let me know, what would you do if you had this amazing robotic arm I just showed you how to build? Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video subscribe for upcoming robotics content.